ancient proverb you may have heard before. It states, Give a man a fish, and he will eat for a day. Give a man a school of fish, and he will make amazing 3D animations in Adobe After Effects. Hi, I'm Noel from creationeffects.com. Here's a picture of me. As you can see, I'm happy as a clam today because I get to show you a new template that I'm very excited about. It's called Schools, and it lets you create schools of fish and underwater scenes in After Effects. I'm going to show you how to use it in a minute, but first let me quickly tell you about its features. Uh, with this effect, you can just drop in an image of a fish and you'll immediately have a 3D school that you can customize and animate. And these fish look really good because they're oscillating in three dimensions. And also because we have all these other watery effects that add to the realism. There's floating plankton particles, there's bubbles, there's random blurring and warping, and sun rays, water visibility control, and a caustics texture that projects over the school and the entire scene. All of those custom effects are included as well as 74 images of coral, plants, rocks, and other oceany stuff so that you can create rich 3D scenes to put your schools in. In fact, all of these scenes that you've been watching are included in the template, plus control, control, control. And uh, actually, I originally typed out all the different ways you can control your schools, and I was gonna share it in my intro, and it was too long, so I figured I'd just say control three times, and uh, I thought that would be just as effective. So, was I right? No? Fine. But you do have a lot of control over the school's swim behavior using convenient slider controls, and you can animate just a single fish or a huge school. I've tested it with 2,000 fish, and uh, you can tell them exactly where to swim or uh, just give them random movement. And hopefully I have your attention now because I'm going to do something really shellfish and plug two other templates, Flocks and Swarms. Those two, along with Schools, are part of the same series, so you can check those out at creationeffects.com and get the bundle at a discount if that interests you. All right, there's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. And by the way, I want to apologize in advance for all the ocean puns. Normally, I prefer dry humor myself. Anyway, I didn't want to have him, uh, but I didn't really have a choice. And you might be wondering, how did he not have a choice? He made the video, so good for you. I'm going to cover the most important stuff first. I'll start with creating a basic school, and I'll talk about the uh, layer setup and how the school works. Then I'll show you how to add fish. I'll go through the controls for customizing the swim behavior. Uh, then I'll show you how to animate the school to swim on a specific motion path. Next, I'll go over how to make really large schools of fish because that process is a little different. And I'll show you the marine mammals and what you can do with them. Then we'll look at the 3D scenes. Um, I'll go over all the extra effects, including caustics and water visibility. And I'll show you how to import a school and multiple schools into a scene. And I'll show you how to duplicate schools and finally, I'll end with some troubleshooting tips that you'll want to see if you're using any version of After Effects older than Creative Cloud 2017. So this tutorial will be a little on, uh, but that's because there's so much to go over. Um, I'll actually be moving through it pretty fast, and if you stay to the end, I think you're going to learn a lot about After Effects and how it works. So let's begin. School is in session. Um, opening the zip file, there is a correct and wrong way to open your zip file uh, so that you don't get errors in After Effects. So if you're on a PC, be sure to right-click the zip file and choose the Extract All option. And if you're on a Mac, you can just double-click it. And when you open the project file inside, you should see some instructions here, and hopefully the Effect Controls panel. If not, just go to Window and click Effect Controls. And you're going to want this panel to be really wide because there are controls with long names and you'll need to be able to read them. And so let's make a school of fish. It's really easy. First, you want to figure out which fish you want to use. And you can open this images folder and the fish folder and you'll find 37 images in here. So, you know, just fish around and find the one that you like. And once you know which fish you're using, you can then decide how many segments you want to use. So in the Create Your Own School folder here, you can see that we have several folders for the different number of segments. 
The segments are how many different sections are oscillating in each fish. So it's kind of like the resolution of the fish. The more segments a fish has, the more flexible it is. So uh, this 10 and 20 segment fish, you should really only use that if you want a school of eels or snakes. Um, most fish look good with four or five segments. If it's a particularly flexible or big fish, you can use seven. Uh, I'm going to use five segments for my dory fish. Um, there's a comp named put your fish image in here. And can you guess what we do with that? Yes, good. We put dory in there. And uh, you'll see a guide in there and some instructions. And this basically says you can bring in any fish image. Uh, it should have a transparent background. And it should be facing to the right. And it should fill the width of the comp. And also, important note, if you bring in a fish and it's taller than the comp, don't scale the fish down uh, because it has to extend all the way from side to side. Just open the composition settings and increase the height of the comp. And then you'll need to open the segmentation folder and change the height of all of these segment comps as well. You can just use the shortcut uh, Control or Command K to open the composition settings and then enter in the same height that you put before. And uh, if the fish is shorter than the comp, then you're fine. You don't need to shorten the comp. I'll open up the school comp now, and we should see a school of surgeon fish that are already swimming around kind of randomly. And there's an instructions layer at the top that you can unhide and read. And there are instruction layers in pretty much every comp. And uh, then also some of these layers have marker notes that you can double click and uh, read the notes for that layer. You'll probably want to set the preview resolution to half so that you can preview faster. And also, if you want to work in a different resolution, that's no problem. The effect will work the same in any resolution. Just open the composition settings and set your comp to 4K or whatever you want. All right, let's preview this comp and you can see what it looks like with the default settings. All right, before we customize it, let me explain what's going on here. I'll make our timeline nice and big. Every school has one leader fish at the top, and the leader will be all yellow layers. So you can see this one fish is made of five layers, one layer for each segment. And uh, underneath the leader fish, we have multiple follower fish, which are the blue layers. And again, each follower fish is a group of five layers, and the segments are in order, with segment one at the top and segment five at the bottom. And now you might be wondering, that's a lot of layers. What if I want like 300 fish? Well, that's no problem. After Effects can handle it. Um, I was actually really surprised at how fast the school is rendered. And if you need it even more, like over a thousand fish, there's an option for that as well that we'll get to in a moment. So anyway, the follower fish are all doing what the leader fish is doing and swimming where he swims, but on a delay and with a certain amount of random behavior mixed in there. As for how the fish are oscillating, uh, let me take you to this oscillation previews folder so you can see. And I'll open the five segment one and play it back. So this is a top view of the fish swimming in place. Um, since we're looking down on the fish, all those 2D segments just look flat. And uh, they are. Uh, but we can see now that they're oscillating in three dimensions which is what gives the fish the appearance of having depth. And even when the fish is swimming toward the camera, it still appears to have some depth if it's oscillating. Back in my school comp, uh, let's go over changing the number of fish in our school. Removing fish is easy. Just select the layers and hide or delete them. Uh, to add fish, you can just duplicate any of the follower fish, which again are the blue layers. And there is a correct process for doing this. Uh, be sure to select all the layers of the fish. So you can click the top layer and then shift click the bottom layer. Then duplicate them, control or command D. And while they're still selected, drag them down to the bottom. It's important to drag them to the bottom because the segments have to stay together and in the right order or the fish won't work right. Uh, you can also duplicate a bunch of fish at once. It's the same process. You just select multiple fish duplicate, and then drag them down to the bottom. So let's start customizing our school. 
I'll select the school control layer. And then in the effect controls panel, you can see we've got a bunch of controls separated into categories. And let me go over a few of these first ones. The random seed control at the top, uh, this will add completely new random movements and positions to your fish. So if you don't like how they're swimming or turning, you can just put in a new value here. And uh, you can adjust the size of the fish, of course. So, so just click and drag the value and you can scale them up. Actually, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that one counts. That's an After Effects term. Can we just take that off the counter, please? Thank you. And a little further down, we have what I call the water visibility controls. Uh, so this is what I came up with to make it so that the fish and scene elements disappear into their background as they get <clears throat> further away uh, from the camera layer. So the water color, uh, you would just want to use your eyedropper to sample your background color. And the effect calculates the distance in pixels of each layer from the camera layer. And then uh, uses a tint effect on the layer to tint it the right amount. So the water visibility control here is the distance from the camera. And for example, if this is set to 3,500 pixels, then a fish that is 3,500 pixels or more from the camera will be tinted this color an amount of 90%. And a fish at zero pixels from the camera will have a tint amount of 0% since we have the minimum tint set to zero. Here's our camera layer up here at the top and don't delete it. Every comp has to have a camera layer and it has to be named camera one. Now the rest of these controls affect the swimming behavior and the random movement of the school. Again, you don't have to use random movement. You can give the school a specific motion path but even with a motion path, it's good to give them some random movement to make them look more organic and natural. The movement, and this entire template really, is ruled by the wiggle expression. And if you don't know what the wiggle expression is, uh, you will after using this template. And so that you can understand how to use the controls better, I've set up this quick example to let you see what multiple levels of wiggle does to a layer. I'll make this really quick. I've got a circle shape here and I'll reveal its position by typing the P key. And I'll alt click the stopwatch to add my expression. And I know there's a school of thought out there that expressions are really complicated and scary. And that's a bunch of carp. Well, some expressions are scary, but the wiggle expression is not one of them. It's just a simple piece of code. Wiggle, and then in parentheses, one comma 500, end parentheses. So now, once every second, the circle will wiggle around randomly about 500 pixels. And I can slow it down by cutting the speed in half. So now it'll wiggle 500 pixels about once every two seconds. Now I'll hit the A key to reveal the anchor point. And the anchor point also affects the position of the circle in our frame. And I'll add an expression here that makes it wiggle much faster. I'll say wiggle 5, comma, 100. And let's take a look. And I know that doesn't look like a fish or anything, but it shows you how we can have multiple levels of wiggle on an object. It's still got the slow, large wiggle, and it added the fast, smaller wiggle. See? You don't have to be a brain sturgeon to get this stuff. Now, I've put all these controls at zero, uh, so we have this boring clump of fish and they're not going anywhere and now we'll start to make the school come to life one control at a time and first thing we'll do here is spread them out because they're all on top of each other so up in the school scale section i'll set the horizontal spread to 500 pixels the vertical spread to 200 pixels and the depth to 500 pixels they're not moving yet though, so in the school movement section, I'll set the horizontal wiggle amount to something like 1000 pixels at a speed of let's say 0 0.3. And I'll give them some vertical and depth wiggle as well. So the school will be swimming around randomly in three dimensions. And let's take a look at that. And you can see the fish are programmed to always point toward the direction that they're moving.
Okay, this school needs some work because they're moving like a bunch of robots. They all turn at exactly the same time. Uh, so we need to add a delay to the follower fish. Under the school movement controls, we have this position delay in followers control. And uh, I'll set that to like 15. So with that control, you can set how synchronized the school should be. And that's better, but you can also see that they're all oscillating and wagging their tails at the exact same time. And uh, then they stop and glide for a bit all at the same time. So down in the oscillation controls, uh, there's a control named oscillation delay in followers. I generally like the oscillation of each fish to appear totally random. So I'll set it to something high like 300. Let's have a look better but let's keep going they're all staying the same distance apart from each other but real schools will usually spread out and then it's like they panic and they rush back toward each other and uh, we can do that by adding wiggle to the spread controls that we were adjusting earlier so we had set the horizontal spread to 500 pixels and uh, we'll make that value wiggle by a maximum amount of 300 pixels about 0 0.8 times a second and I'll enter some vertical and depth wiggle as well okay but why stop there there's more wiggle that we can put on our school um, in this school movement section second level wiggle amount and second level wiggle speed and uh, you can see in parentheses here it says school so this wiggle will be applied to the whole school um, Technically, it actually just applies to the leader fish, but the follower fish then do whatever the leader does uh, while taking that position delay into account. I'll just put in a smallish wiggle amount, like 50 pixels, and a speed of 0 0.5. And after that, we have another pair of similar controls, but instead of school, it says individuals. So this will make each fish swim around independently. Uh, which I think makes the school look really nice and more realistic. I'll put 150 pixels at a speed of 0 0.5. So those are the controls that affect position. Um, but at the bottom, we also have these controls for the oscillation. So how the fish wiggle as they swim. And I recommend that uh, you don't experiment with these controls in this comp because it's kind of hard to see what they're doing. I'll go back to our oscillation preview comp um, for our five segment fish. Again, we've got this top view of a fish and uh, we have a control layer here with all the same oscillation controls that we had in the other comp. So you've got oscillation speed and amplitude and uh, some wiggle controls for the amplitude so that you can get a combination of wiggling and gliding in each fish. Um, I'm not going to go over these in detail. You can just play around and see what they do. And uh, if you find a combination you like, just make a note of the values you entered, and then you can put the same values into your other comp. All the way at the bottom, you have one more section of oscillation controls. And I put advanced on there because I, I really would rather you don't mess with them. Now, these determine how much each segment rotates. And there's just a, a very delicate balance to get them all oscillating evenly. But if you're feeling adventurous, you can play around here. Uh, theoretically, you should be able to animate the fish to do some realistic turns or movements. But anyway, you've been warned. If you mess around with these, uh, you will probably start to flounder. Here's a couple more tips that might improve your animation, but they also come with a warning. First of all, motion blur. Uh, all of your fish layers have motion blur enabled, so all you have to do is switch on motion blur for the comp, and that can really add to the realism of your school, especially if you have fast-moving fish, um, although it does add to the render time. If you want to adjust the amount of motion blur, you can do that in the composition settings. Uh, just click on the Advanced tab, and you can adjust the shutter angle. Another feature you can enable is depth of field, which will make fish that are closer to the camera a little out of focus. Just double click the camera layer and you can check enable depth of field here and then lower the f-stop to something like one or less. 
Now, both the depth of field and the motion blur will blur your fish, uh, which can cause a problem. You might start to see vertical lines or gaps in between the different fish segments. And that's because the edges of the segments are blurry or feathered, so you can start to see right through them. The only fix I have for that is this control on the control layer. It's down in the body tail oscillation section, and it's called close segment gaps. And that'll bring the segments closer to each other and start to close that gap. Uh, but depending on how much blur the fish has, it might not completely erase the problem, so just watch out for that. So here's the school we made, but with more fish, and they're a little smaller. And this is all right, but a problem with using the random movement controls is you get these sudden changes in direction where the fish just flips. Because remember, it always has to orient itself to the direction that it's headed. Well, the way to avoid that is to make your own smoother, curved motion path for the school. And I would definitely recommend this method over relying on just the random movement. So I've set up this scene with this 3D title, and I'm going to, as quickly as I can, animate our school to come in from the front and kind of swim a spiral around the text and then swim off to the side. Remember that all the follower fish all follow the leader, but on a delay. So all we have to do is keyframe the position of the leader fish in three dimensions, and uh, the other fish will follow. I've already turned down my random movement controls so that uh, the fish will stick to the path, more or less, um, but some randomness is good, so I didn't turn them down too much. So to keyframe the leader fish, all we really need to do is keyframe this segment one layer, uh, because these other segments are parented to that first segment. So I'll select that layer and hit the P key to reveal the position property and I'll move the school into its starting position. So I drag them up close by the camera and off to the side a little bit. And to illustrate a problem that we're gonna have, I'm not gonna move them all the way out of view just yet. Um, but I'll add my first keyframe. And I usually like to add my beginning and end keyframe first, and then go back and add the in-between keyframes. So I'll go forward about eight seconds. That's how long I want my animation to last and I'll move them to their end position. All right, whenever you're creating a 3D motion path, you're gonna to wanna to look at it at different angles. So this little drop-down menu will let you look at the, uh, the scene from different angles. I'm gonna choose the top view, and I'll zoom out. So you can see our title up here, and up here is our camera. And right now the fish are just swimming a straight path diagonally here. I can add a keyframe to this motion path by using the pen tool. I'll just click on it and then use the move tool to move that vertice to change that motion path. So let's go back to active camera view. These handles will let you adjust the curve. And for the sake of time, I'm probably gonna fast forward through a lot of this. Um, I really just wanted to give you a basic idea of how to create this 3D motion path. And let's just add two more keyframes to create our spiral. I'm sorry if it's not very clear what I'm doing, but it does take some practice to get the hang of it. But the main thing to remember is to keep the motion path smooth on no corners and look at it in the different 3D views. You can see as I ran preview this that some of these fish have taken off and others are just kind of wandering around aimlessly twiddling their fins and they don't know what to do. And that's because they're on a delay, so they haven't really started following the leader fish yet. So what we can do is go back to that position delay control on our control layer. We can see it at, it's at 80 right now, but we can change that to a negative value. And now the follower fish are actually gonna be moving in front of the leader fish. Okay, so I turned on motion blur and here's what we got. It could probably still use some work, but hopefully you got something out of that. I do recommend that you use this method for uh, controlling where your fish swim as opposed to using the random movement controls. Okay, before I get to the 2D fish, let me talk about numbers of fish and limitations. I've tested this five segment school uh, with 500 fish. So at five layers per fish, that was 2,500 layers. 
and that took my iMac about an hour to render a second of animation. So a 10 second clip uh, you could probably do overnight and if you have the time you could probably add even more fish. Technically there's no limit on how many layers you can have in After Effects, um, but a bug might prevent you from actually seeing them all. At least on my computer, after about a thousand layers you can't see the blue bars anymore. And after about 1500 layers, you can't scroll down any further, uh, even though the layers are there. And it'll also start running pretty slow, which makes it harder to work with. Um, let me show you a different way to get large schools. And I've tested this method with 2000 fish. And again, theoretically, you should be able to do more if you have the patience. Um, the 2000 fish rendered at about two hours per second. So inside my 2D fish folder, I'll open the your school 2d comp and in here each fish is just a single layer uh, which is why it's faster to add fish just select a bunch of blue layers and duplicate them and uh, the school is not actually 2d because these fish are swimming and turning in three dimensions just like the other schools but they're a single flat layer so they're not oscillating in three dimensions um, so this comp is, is best for large schools of fish that are small or are kind of in the background because you won't really notice that they're not oscillating if you keep them small. But if I isolate just this one fish and scale it up, you can see that it is kind of oscillating, um, but it's only noticeable at a profile view. So what's going on here is each layer is a looping movie clip of a fish swimming. And here's the file that's being used here. I'll delete that and I'll show you how to make your own video clip. First, open the step one folder that says put your image here. And I'll drag in an image from my fish folder. Let's go with a minnow. And I'll open step two. And here we have a 10 second comp with our fish swimming in place. So you can customize the oscillation if you want with a control layer and then you just export this comp. And you can unhide the instructions layer here to see the export settings. Basically you just go to composition and add to render queue. There's no need to open up Adobe Media Encoder for this. Uh, you can just do it in the render queue. I'll name it Minnow and I'll click on output module. We need our movie to have a transparent background or what's known as an alpha channel. So um, I'll keep this at QuickTime and I'll click on Format Options. And for my video codec, I'll choose Animation. Now in this Channels drop-down button, I'll choose RGB plus Alpha. And I'll make sure the depth says Millions of Colors Plus. And that's it. Click OK and click Render. It should go really fast. Um, then you can bring it into After Effects. And the step three comp says put exported video here. So drag it in there. And you can see it's not long enough. Our comp is 30 seconds and the clip is 10 seconds. So we need to set it to loop continuously. Just right click the file in the project panel, go to interpret footage and main. And down here, we'll just set it to loop 100 times. And that's it. Now you can open the school comp and customize their movement just like the other comps. All right, the last thing I want to show you in this create your own school folder is the mammals. After I did the fish, I was thinking to myself, well, I definitely wanted to add some really killer effects in here to help seal the deal. So I added these four marine mammals and they work a little differently uh, because fish oscillate side to side but mammals oscillate up and down. And I use the, the puppet pin effect to warp the images to make it look like they're wiggling their bodies. And uh, you can customize their oscillation speed and everything on the control layer, just like with the fish. But what's different is they're not oscillating in three dimensions. So I would recommend against having your pods swim toward or away from the camera and just keep a profile view. And you can see if I reveal the keyframes on this leader dolphin, I have them just swimming across the frame. So that's kind of the ideal setup for the mammals. All right, moving on, uh, let's talk about 3D scenes. 
I have seven completed scenes and you saw them in the demo video if you watched it. Um, depending on the popularity of this template, I might add more in the future. I'll open up Sandy Reef. That's a pretty basic one. So you can bring your school into here and I'll show you how to do that pretty soon. But let's look at what this scene is made up of. Down at the bottom usually is where we have all of our images of coral or plants or whatever. These are just 2D images positioned in 3D space. And uh, these all come from the images folder in this scene elements folder. So there's lots of stuff in here that you can use to build your own 3D scenes if you want. They're all from the public domain, so there's no copyright issues. And they've all been isolated with a transparent background. I can't make a whole scene for you right now, but the basic idea is you bring in an image and enable 3D for the layer and open its position property and scale. And then you can place it wherever you want. And in the material options, don't forget to turn off accepts lights. And always be sure to add a tint effect for the water visibility. Um, I can just copy it from one of these other layers and paste it in there and it'll tint the layer the right amount depending on how far it is from the camera. And just remember each scene has to have a camera layer in it and it has to be named camera one. And you don't even have to use it. You can turn it off if you want, but it needs to be there in order for water visibility to work. If you uh, select the camera layer and type the E key two times, it'll reveal all the expressions on the layer. So you can see we have two simple wiggle expressions on the position and on the orientation of our camera. And uh, that's because cameras aren't usually on a tripod in the ocean. Someone's holding them and they're kind of floating back and forth with the current. So you can edit these values if you want, or uh, just click the little equal sign icon to turn them off. If you want to customize the water visibility uh, for your scene, you can do that in this scene control layer. You'll recognize these controls as just like the controls for the school. And uh, then the very first control here is caustics brightness. So you can control how bright this shadowy texture is on the layers that are set up to receive it. And we're about to get into that in a minute, but let's take a look, a quick look at what else we have going on in our scene. Above our image layers, we have all of these other effects that help make this scene come alive. And uh, you can access all of these effects up in the project panel in this folder named Extra Effects. So we've got lots of stuff in here and you can just unhide any layer to see what it does to this still image at the bottom. There's blurring and warping and bubbles, floating specks, sun rays. Uh, you can customize any of these using the slider controls on each of the layers. And with most of these, you can just copy and paste the layers into your scene, but read the marker notes because there might be some specific instructions for applying the effects. And this random blurring effect, uh, for example, probably requires some explanation. Um, this layer here has this camera lens blur effect, and the effect references this layer underneath it, random blurring map. It uses it to determine where and how much to blur your scene. So this map layer, if I unhide it, is just a black and white texture that is constantly evolving. And this is a pre-comp, so if I double click it, I can get in there and use the slider controls on this layer to customize the texture. The white areas will be blurred the most and the black areas will be blurred the least. And so what you need to remember when copying this effect into your scene is not only do you have to select and copy both layers together, but after you paste them in, you have to repair that link to the map layer. So in the camera lens blur effect, go to the blur map section and set layer to your random blurring map layer. Let's look at some of the other extra effects that are in here. Uh, you can see we have the water visibility effect, so you can access that in here if you need to. And at the top here, we have our 3D caustics projection effect. This one is pretty important, and it's how we get that moving texture on our school and our scene, which imitates sunlight shining through the surface of the water. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes going over this effect. Let's uh, look at this caustics texture first. This is kind of just like the blur map. It's an evolving texture. 
And if you select the control layer, you can see the controls for customizing the texture. I'll uh, open this other comp, 3D Caustics Projection. We've got a bunch of instructions, but I'll just hide those. Um, I set up a little 3D scene here to help you understand how this effect works. And I should note that you have to be previewing your comp in full resolution in order to get an accurate view of the texture. If I set this to half resolution, you can see how that affects the texture. All right, I've got a floor layer here and a few different shape layers. And the caustics texture is being projected onto these layers. I'll switch my view angle to the right side and I'll zoom out a bit. And so now we're looking at the scene from the right side. Here are my three shape layers. And up high and in the front is my light layer. And then floating in between the light layer and my scene is my caustics texture. You can see here that my caustics texture layer is parented to my light layer. So if I move my light layer, you can see that it follows my light layer around. If you want to move the texture closer or further from the light, you can just open up the position property uh, for the layer by hitting the P key and then changing the Z position value. And as you might expect, that will affect the size of the texture on your scene, as will changing the scale of this layer. But that might be something that you'll need to do if you discover that the uh, texture is not being projected over your entire scene. So how does this light project this texture onto the scene, you might ask? Well, it's a cool little thing, and I'm glad you asked. It's uh, done through the material options. Any layer with 3D enabled will have material options. And you can access them by selecting the 3D layer and hitting the A key twice. This is the layer that's being projected. So that's possible when cast shadows is on and light transmission is set all the way to 100%. All right, now I'll close that and open up the material options for one of our shapes. So for your coral or other scene elements, you can have cast shadows on if you want it to cast a shadow on your other scene elements. Accepts shadows has to be on in order to receive the caustics texture. And accepts lights can be on or off, but I prefer it to be off because it affects how bright the layer is, uh, which can then mess with the water visibility effect. So that's caustics projection. Every scene will have one of these light layers and a caustics texture layer. And you can position that light layer wherever you want, and you can open up the caustics texture and customize it if you need to. All right, moving on. Let me uh, show you how to import the schools into the scenes. First of all, and this is on the need to know section of the website, I recommend that you have After Effects version Creative Cloud 2017 or later for this process of uh, copying schools so that it will go as smoothly as possible. If you're using anything from CS6 to Creative Cloud 2015, you'll probably get some errors. So if that's you, uh, stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to go over some troubleshooting tips. And uh, if you're really old school and you're using CS5, then you're really going to be in deep water. Uh, by the way, I realize that the jokes are probably wearing a little thin by now, but uh, oh well, deal with it. But anyway, the trouble comes mostly with copying multiple schools into a single scene. As long as you're using CS6 or up, you won't have any problems copying a single school into your scene. And in fact, it's really simple. So let me show you how to do that now. I'll go to my school's comp and I'll select the control layer first, then go all the way to the bottom and shift select the last fish layer. I'll copy those and go to my scene and select the layer where I want my school to be pasted. The pasted layers are going to go directly above whatever layer is selected. And um, right below the caustics texture layer is probably the best place. And that's because we want all of our 3D layers to be together without any 2D layers in between them. Because uh, that will disrupt some of the 3D effects, like the caustics projection. And my school is all 3D layers, so we want those to be with the other 3D layers. So right here is a good place. I'll just paste them and wait. What? Where'd they go? Well, take it easy, they're still there. We just have the shy switch on. The, uh, the shy switch will hide any layers that have shy enabled here, which is all of our follower fish layers. 
So it's just easier to keep those hidden uh, since it's usually hundreds of layers. And then you can see all of your other scene layers. But if you'd rather see all of your layers, you can just flip that shy switch and uh, they'll show up. So whatever floats your boat. Okay, and the last thing you'll need to do is match the water visibility of your school to your scene. So you would want to go to your scene control layer and copy the color code here and memorize the values for these other controls and just put them in the same way on your school control layer. Now, if you want to copy multiple schools of fish into a scene, and I would think that most of you would, there's an extra step that you'll have to go through. I'll open up one of these other schools, uh, which have these angelfish in it. And before we copy this school, we have to do some renaming because all of these layers have expressions that are referencing these other layers. And remember, we already have layers in our scene comp with these exact same names. Uh, because we already copied a school into it. So if we copied this school into that scene um, the way that they are, uh, we would have expressions referencing the wrong layers and it would just mess everything up. So what we need to do is just rename our school control layer and our leader fish layers. The best way to do this is just add the name of the species to the end of the layer and that will help you keep track of your schools inside your scenes comp. So I'll just add angelfish to this name and then copy angelfish. And it'll take a few seconds because it's updating all the expressions. And paste it to my other layers. And then I'll select all my layers, starting with the school control layer. And copy them. And then in my scenes comp, I'll select the layer where I want to paste my school, right above this other school, and paste those layers. So now we have two separate schools and you can customize them with their own separate controls and you can repeat this process as many times as you need. Now, it's conceivable and one might even say probable that you uh, would want to make more than one school of five segment fish or multiple schools of four segment fish. And the process is slightly more complicated than just duplicating the school. So here's how you do it. Select the entire folder and duplicate it, Control or Command D. Now inside the duplicated folder, you can put a different species of fish inside uh, the uh, put your fish image in here comp. And then we got to do some replacing uh, because now, like in this segment one comp, this still has the fish image from our original four segment fish folder in here. So we need to swap it with this comp here. And the way to do that is to select a layer and then select the uh, item that will be taking its place up here in the project panel. And then with them both selected, hold down the Alt or Option key and drag the item from the project panel right onto the layer. So all that's really doing is swapping out the source of this layer. All of the settings and effects on this layer will be preserved. Um, so we need to do that with each of these segment comps. And then open up the Your School comp, and we got to replace all of these layers with the new correct fish segments. And what I do is just go down and select all of the segment one layers first. Just hold down Command or Control to uh, select multiple layers. And when they're all selected, go up here and select the uh, segment one comp. And with them both selected, hold down Alt or Option, and then drag it on top of one of those selected layers. And then I would just do that process over again with the segment two layers and then the segment three layers and so on. So I'm sorry if that process is a little cumbersome. Uh, that's just what you got to do. I didn't make it that way on purpose. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. So troubleshooting. Um, like I said, if you're using Creative Cloud 2017 or a newer version, uh, you shouldn't have any problem copying schools into your scene or even multiple schools, it's easy, all right? It's like shooting fish in a barrel. But if you're using any older version, you're probably going to get expression errors during the uh, renaming process. So I'm in CS6 now, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll add Needlefish to this control layer's name. And if you're in Creative Cloud 2014 or Creative Cloud 2015, uh, After Effects 
will tell you about all these errors you're getting in a little box up here. I'll keep uh, renaming my layers. Uh, we're going to have to fix those expressions. But rather than doing that on hundreds of layers, we're just going to copy over the minimum. So the, uh, the control layer, our leader fish, and one follower fish. So I'll just copy and paste those over to my scene. Now with those layers still selected, I'll just right click one of them and choose Reveal Expression Errors. And that's not bad, there's just a couple errors here. Uh, depending on which version of After Effects you're using, you might have more. But uh, let me show you how to fix them. Just click on the expression box, and we're looking for any of our layer names that need to be updated. So you can see uh, references to the control layer here. I'll add Needlefish to those. And here's some references to our segment one layer, and I'll fix those as well. And if we did it right, uh, that little error icon should disappear when we click outside the expression box. And once you fix all the expression errors, it's just a matter of repopulating your school by duplicating your follower fish a bunch of times. So that about does it. Uh, hopefully I've whet your appetite and now you can get to work and start creating some awesome school animations. Don't forget to check out the Flocks and Swarms templates at uh, creationeffects.com. And there's a lot of other cool effects for After Effects there as well, like custom 3D books, realistic VHS tape effects, glitch effects, old film effects, lots of tidal effects, ink bleeds, fire and smoke, growing flourishes, flip books, auroras, and over 40 art effects. So you can convert your video footage into animated artwork in just about any medium that you can think of like pencil sketches, Van Gogh paintings, claymation, pen scribbles, watercolor, grunge looks, graffiti, and a whole lot more.